Alrighty, we are we have uh, prepared our our center block and I have ironed this out all my markings are out and all of the stabilizer is off the back so what we're going to do now is trim this center block so the first thing I'm going to do is turn this so that it is on the square not on the point and get it square on my board I cannot tell you how important it is to have a big board when you do this so go to some place where you have a big a big board that you can lay down now I'm going to take my 20 and a half inch square ruler and set it on my block to to make sure that this ruler is placed on square how you do it is I want you to look for the 45 degree angle that goes right down from corner to corner on the square lay it on the top side lay it on the top side right here all the way across on this beam this embroidered beam so lay that right on that is square now the ruler is setting square on here but we need to put in, we need this, we're going to cut this 26 and a half inches. So keeping this in this uh, direction, I'm only going to move this ruler now left or right. I'm not going to rotate it. I'm just going to keep move it left or right. And I'm putting in next to it a 6 inch wide ruler. And I'm going to just move this straight over. And uh, till I, because I'm going, what I'm, my goal here is to center my embroidered design amongst these two rulers because together they give me 26 and a half inches sweet. So it makes it really easy for me to mark this. Um, the first thing I'm going to, as I put this little six inch ruler on, I want to make sure that right here, that this diagonal line on the ruler is the same distance apart um, from that beam. That's how I know I'm square. That's how, that's how this remains square. Okay, so to center this design, um, you're going to just move the rulers as one unit back and forth until you get them. Um, so you have the same amount of space on one side of the topmost piece of embroidery, which by the way, if you're doing if you're going from the camels to the angels, the cent there's three stars here. It's the center star is the highest one. So I'm gonna go about an inch and three quarters. I'm putting about an inch and three quarters of my ruler past this star. And I'm putting it on this one, then on the camel, this smaller ruler is also an, about an inch and three quarters. Okay, well, actually, that's two, so I'm scooting him over just about. Nope, it was dead on. Okay, sorry. Perfect. It's an inch and three quarters on mine. Happens to be the same exact number on both sides as an inch and three quarters. So here's my marking. So this is how I'm going to mark it. One ruler doesn't move. I'm going to hold the little baby ruler here this, because it's a six inch wide ruler. And you want to make sure you're using a six inch wide, not a six and a half, because that's how you get the actual 26 and a half inches. I'm going to put my finger on the outer edge to hold it. And I'm going to move this big ruler straight down, pushing against this one. So I'm off my fabric here. Then I'm going to move over and I'm going to draw a, a line marking. Uh, indicating my markings on this side. Now, of course, I'm using a uh, removable pen because I don't want to use a ballpoint or anything like that. I'm using a friction pen, actually, and I'm going to go all the way off. So I have my one mark on this side. Now it's time to mark the other one. So now I'm going to move my big ruler down just a little, keeping it very straight, and I'm going to move it down a little more so I can get this little baby ruler all the way down here. And I'm going to mark this one. Slide it up a little bit, continue marking this one, and slide it maybe all the way off if I can reach it. I think I can. There we go. So if you can see right here, if I remove them, then I have the two lines that are 26 and a half inches apart. So now we're going to rotate the fabric. Let's go this way right here and set that up. And now we're going to do the opposite side. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to start off with my with my big ruler put on. Now this time, I'm not using the center uh, the center as my guide. I'm using what I've already drawn. So I'm going to put this ruler down here on the line, directly on the line, the edge of the ruler right on the line, so that I, actually I'm going to come down a half an inch. I think it's easier for me to see if I don't use the edge of the ruler. And then I'm going to put my six inch guy over here. So. I'm now doing the, um, this is the star side, this is the cow side. So I'm now going to try and find the center of those two, the, the embroidery of those two. So I'm going to move this across here. And I think this is going to be about, um, it's about an inch, let's see, about an inch and a half. Let me go there. There's an inch and a half 
Here is an inch and a half, inch and three quarters. Uh, okay, I'm having to divide this one. It's about it's about an inch and mm, two thirds, an inch and a three eighths on mine. It on yours, it'll be whatever it's going to be. What you want is the tail of the cow. That's the furthest piece of embroidery. I don't want you to look at the hay. The hay's not as important. We're going to go with the big pieces. So the tail of the cow and the and the the piece of embroidery that's furthest out here actually is one of these little um, flares coming off the star. That's the furthest thing out. So we're going to try and center those those two. Now um, I'm going to move my ruler up here because I want to make sure my ruler is square on the line that I already drew. There it is. It's square on that line because that's what my square is. I can't move it off of that. And so I'm going to go here with this line here. This is about that's about an inch and a half and this guy is about that's about an inch and a half right there that looks pretty good okay so there's there it is I'm square on this line up here I have my 26 and a half inches I'm ready to draw so I'm going to start on this side again draw one hold the little baby ruler as I move my big guy down all the way Let me make sure I didn't do that. It's perfect. All right, there we go. Now I'm going to come up on this side. I'm going to put my ruler back up here. I'm just going to line that up and make sure it's perfect. And I'll go ahead and draw this side. Bring that guy down a little bit. Okay, there we go. So now we have marked all four sides, and this is my trim line. So this is, the, this is my cutting line. So now I'm ready to cut. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this cut. Let me get out a, a rotary cutter. No telling where I put the good one. Uh, I'm gonna use this right here. I'm gonna use this big bad boy. Okay, I'm just gonna use this little guy right here. So I'm going to line this up and I want to make sure that I'm lining up this bottom line on a line and the side on a line. And this is why using a square ruler is so much better than using a six inch wide ruler. I'm, I can look for a long distance on two sides to make sure it's correct. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut this one. Now when you use a big ruler to cut, your ruler should be actually off of the fabric Went to start so that you have it, you can line it up better. Mine's just barely off, but it is off. I'm lined up here. I'm going to pull my hand down, and you don't want to be within an inch of the edge ever, because if this slipped over, normally it doesn't go over more than an inch. So at least be an inch over. I try and go a little bit more because I really, even though they're huge, I do like these fingers. So I want to keep those. I'm going to cut here, and I'm going to cut up to my finger and stop close my blade, hold this ruler down with this arm, and reposition my hand here. Open my blade, start anywhere that I've already cut, and go up as high as my top finger stop, shut the blade, and I'm going to reposition. Now before I reposition, I'm going to actually uh, move my ruler on up here, making sure that is correct. Yep. And I'm going to start again. I think I'm right about here. I'm going to cut as high as my middle finger, stop, reposition, and cut. And I'm just going to go ahead and cut all the way off. Now I want to show you one other thing. If I only held my hand here, I, my blade is not open, and I went to cut, it moves because this is too big of a ruler. That's why you must reposition your hand in order to get a really excellent cut. Now the next thing I want to show you on cutting is this, and I'm going to rotate this around myself a little 180. I do not actually square it up with the with the grid that I have down here because I'm using my rulers to cut. I'm not using the grid to cut. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the, the cut edge of my small ruler right on the edge of my cut and put this up. And this is and I'm going to cut from this big guy again. Let me get him right on here to hold him down. And I'm going to move this right into position because at this point once you cut this 
it doesn't really matter what you drew you go the 26 and a half inches away from your cut line so once you make your first cut remeasure everything off of the first cut so we'll start right here and I'm going to start uh, w about an inch from the edge I, if, I would never start on the edge if I'm starting like in the middle like this because that way you don't accidentally cut the edge of your the tip of your ruler off so I'm going to cut here close that and reposition open that back up and cut that and then let's see now I'm going to hold my little guy in position and bring this ruler all the way down okay let's make sure he's all lined up perfectly and I'm off the I want to make sure I go off the edge here that looks great that's my cut and that's it so there's our first cut side to side those look great um, I can see I was off by a millimeter maybe from what I drew, but I always want to go off what the cut line is. So now I'm going to rotate it one more time. Put the put this on. Now when we start this time, I'll start down here lower so I can see it. I'm going to put my ruler back on to get to my 26 and a half inch mark on this side. That looks like that's it right there. And lines up great. Now what I'm going to do is put um, before I start cutting, I'm going to make sure that the line on the ruler is exactly in the same, is right on the edge of the cut because this cuts your permanent record. So this is what we want to go by because it's already cut. So we're going to start here. Put that down and I'm going to move my ruler up and off the fabric. There we go. Open it back up. I think I can start right here and off. Good. Um, also, when you cut, I want to make sure that your your ruler your your um, your rotary should be up and down. Don't cut it at, at an angle because then you cut in. So make sure you're just cutting um, with your um, ruler with your rotary kind of straight up and down. All right, here we go. Last one. Put the little guy here on the edge so that it is straight that looks good there I'm gonna put a line down here I'm gonna pick a line on my ruler and make sure I get all the way across on that line excellent and we're gonna move that over just a hair that looks pretty darn good all right and we're gonna cut Move that all the way up. That looks pretty yummy. And I think I can just do my last cut right there. Let's see if that was it. That was it. All right. And we are cut. So that's it. We have a 26 and a half inch square. And I'm ready now to do the quarter inch border. To get directions for the quarter inch border, please watch my website. I have a video on the quarter inch border. On YouTube. On YouTube. Thank you.